Five, four, three, two, one. We're ready to go. Nicola, welcome to Monitor Plus and thank you for taking the time to join us today. No problem. You are looking fantastic. I love the glasses as well. Oh, thank you. No worries. Can you please tell the audience who you are and who Montefiore is so they can get some context about what the discussion is going to be? Sure. Um, so Montefiore is a not-for-profit organisation. We're an aged care provider um, and we operate um, a few different uh, sort of branches under our business. So we've got a residential care services um, facilities that uh, are sort of scattered across Sydney. So we've got one in Hunters Hill and three in the eastern suburbs. Um, we also have a help at home service, um, so home care services. And then this year we launched our independent living units on site at our Randwick campus. That's interesting. Uh, so, yes, yeah, it's, it's, mm. it's a great place to work and um, the aged care industry is a very interesting place, uh, yep. interesting, interesting industry. Quite diverse. Sort of yeah, yeah. Yep. So I guess where that fits into um, recruitment and onboarding and what we're talking about today, um, we have a very diverse workforce. So we have about 1,100 employees across our business. Um, and that's working across different areas. So mm. a, a bulk of our employees are in the clinical services area. Mm. Mm. So that's your registered nurses, AINs, um, clinical specialists and management. Um, and then we've got a big hotel services team. So our um, dining room attendants, kitchen hands, chefs, maintenance, concierge. Mm. Yep. Uh, and then Montefiore is lucky enough to have a big allied health offering as well on staff. So our physios, social workers, dietitians, the list goes on. Um, so my role at Montefiore is people and culture advisor, um, but I was responsible for, um, for rolling out the implementation of my recruitment plus okay. during a three months okay. earlier this year. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Okay. So let's dive into it. I think everybody's probably thinking right now, why taking the time uh, investing the time and money at Montefiore to embark on a journey of refurbishing uh, both the functions of recruitment and onboarding at Montefiore. Mm -hmm. So share with us the challenges, why they were severe enough for you guys to go and invest the time and money to do this. Yeah, so there were a, f a few challenges that we had that we wanted to, I guess, improve on in terms of our processes. The first one was uh, the candidate experience. So we were using a, a different platform previously. Um, it was quite clunky for our candidates to use that. Um, we had to provide a lot of support in the HR team to a lot of the candidates okay. in terms of creating a profile and setting up mm. um, a username and password, for example. Mm. Mm. Um, and so we wanted to make the experience for the candidates a lot easier to manage. Um, so that was sort of one of the- You were the, getting drop off from that, uh, I guess? We, I mean, that's an assumption that we both. were making, that we were sort of losing talent um, because it was too difficult to put yep. an application through. Yep. Um, another sort of challenge that we had was just in terms of our reach. So being able to post jobs across different job boards, we, we were sort of limited in how many job boards we could post one ad to and it's okay. quite a manual process if we wanted to extend it. So log on to that job board, copy and paste the same That's right. parts of the ad. Yeah. And then also with that, we weren't able to identify where our candidates were coming from in terms of which job board they had applied through. Got it. Um, so in terms of when we're re-advertising a similar role, the same role down the track, we thought it'd be great to be able to um, target where we were pushing yep. the ad to. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then in terms of just inconsistencies in our process, we wanted to sort of streamline how we did how we do things. So previously, we didn't have a centralised uh, onboarding system. So it wasn't, if you were, say, for example, working in one particular area, you might have a different, completely different onboarding experience to working in another area, mm. just naturally because it was somebody else mm. that was doing it for you. So mm. we wanted to be able to create efficiencies in how we were doing things to be able to centralise um, onboarding to our people and culture yep. team so that we could make it more consistent okay. and streamlined. Um, and then just in terms of... Um, working in the aged care industry it's a highly regulated environment so there's a lot of compliance checks that we need to conduct as part of our pre-employment checks and that was something that we were spending a lot of time using paperwork um, for so seeing okay. candidates going through paperwork and then collecting that paperwork and filing it and storing it um, so we wanted to improve how we were, mm. we were doing that and, and also how we could communicate with candidates um, during that pre-employment pre mm. okay. phase of recruitment Okay. Um, and then in terms of onboarding um, as a challenge that we had, 
similar to what I said before, is creating more consistency in how we onboarded people. That mm. was something that we really wanted to focus on. And yep. um, again, previously, there was a lot of paperwork involved, involved in onboarding someone. So mm. um, there would be like a pack that was put together by the hiring manager mm. that had, say, 10, 15 different pieces of paper in it that was issued to a candidate and it could have been depending on where they're working, it could be mm. posted to them or emailed to them or given okay. to them on their first day, and then they would need to complete all those forms yep. um, as part of their onboarding process to then be sent to our payroll team, mm. which is the next sort of challenge that I want to talk about is um, the manual process that our payroll team had to go through to create a new employee in our um, payroll system. So we use Chris21, um, and they would have to collect. Okay. So they would receive all that those papers and mm. use those to then employ input that mm. information into Chris 21. So those were sort of our, our challenges. The key challenges you want to talk about. Yeah. Okay. I've written here six of them. That's right. Hopefully I didn't um, leave got it, any, got any of them out. Good. Fantastic. Okay. So I guess everybody wants to hear now, how did we, how did you go about to solve each of those? And please, you know, feel free to cover not just the technology aspect, which, you know, clearly it would be, I guess, more recruitment plus, the technology aspect of the solution, but if there's anything that you would give a tip or anything from the process point of view, maybe training managers and people and, you know, communicating and stuff, uh, please share any of that as well, not just the technology aspect of it. So let's go uh, right into it then. The first point is that I've got here is previous system, clunky, login to create a profile, too much support needed from your end. Yeah. How did we solve that problem so with the my recruitment plus platform you don't uh, the candidates don't need a username and password um, so they apply through whatever job board they've seen the ad and it will link them to um, my recruitment plus to um, submit mm -hmm. um, so there'd be like a screening tool that would be assigned to that job that yep. they would complete through that platform and then they basically attach their resume and their mm. cover letter or whatever whatever we've um, assigned as being mandatory mm. documents it's, that they need to attach. Sorry, a screening tool, Sorry, screening questions. Yeah, so depending on the role, we've created a number of different screening tools, which can be done through the platform. So mm. um, depending on the role, you might have different questions that you're asking mm. you, or you're wanting to explore. Um, so it's a, it's a good tool to use to sort of screen okay. out. Got um, it candidates so we've got a number of different templates that we use and say for example we were rec recruiting for a night duty registered nurse we might have a question in the screening tool mm -hmm. about their availability to work mm -hmm. which nights of the week for example okay okay so in terms of uh, that problem here i digressed i digressed sorry no 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 um, it's fine i just uh, saw a note here uh, nicola it's all good uh, about uh, the roi about the ads or is that in the next one i'm sorry that's the next point. Okay. All good. Yeah. So we basically the the ultimate goal was to make the application process for our candidates as easy and stri streamlined yep. as possible. Yep. And we have found that, um, I mean, it's very it's a very user friendly mm. system for our candidates, and mm. they're able to um, flick through the application pretty quickly and easily. Yep. And we haven't really had to provide much support at all. Yep. Fantastic. Um, some people might think if you don't create a login and all that drama that comes with having a login, which is pretty challenging because a lot of users probably would refuse to create a login for every company. They would rather just log into Seek or Indeed or those main places. Sure. Um, does that then does that mean that you're going to end up with duplicates, the same person existing in your in 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 your Monocrew Plus database multiple times, or is that streamlined into that same? So it recognizes their email address. So while they're not creating a profile, it recognizes the email address that mm. they're attaching to okay. their application. And what that means for us as well is we have a log of everything that they've applied for. Yeah. So if for whatever reason we don't want to re-interview, we would have a note that's linked to their profile as sure. to why we don't Beautiful. want to pr proceed. Okay. Or, so yeah. still that same person that you can see that they applied multiple times that's and right. the full history of that. Yeah. Fantastic. The second point I've got here is the ad posting or multi-posting, I guess. And I've got a note here about ROI of ads or something. How did we solve that? So the, syst the platform allows us to push to multiple job boards and integrate. We can set up integrations with wh whichever job board we reach out to if it's not already sort of connected there mm. or has a connection option there. Mm. Um, so that's been really good for us um, 
we, I mean, there's a number of free job boards that we regularly use, mm. but then there's obviously a few paid ones that we have yep. integrations set up with. Um, and it means that all of the applications come straight through to okay. the one platform. So you're okay. not looking at multiple areas to see um, where your applications are. Yep. Um, and with that, you can uh, identify the source. So where the applicant has applied through. Um, and what that means for us is the next time we advertise for a similar role or the same role, um, we, we know, know where we had the most success. Yep. success. So for example, yep. I was looking at a registered nurse job yesterday afternoon and I could see that 60% of applicants came from one particular job board. So I know that if we're advertising for a registered nurse next week or whatever yep. it may be, that's our job board that we're going to get the most um, applicants coming mm, Fantastic. Just one thing that comes to mind with the posting you've mentioned you can create the ad once in a sense maybe that's my own words but along the line of the lines of uh, sending creating the ad once to post it everywhere how about if you want to do subsequent editing after that it updates straight away um everywhere as well yeah so when um yeah for, for whatever reason if there's a change and you need to adjust anything in the ad yep. you do that through my okay. plus and okay pushes through to wherever it is. Sorry, C Cassie's talking to us. Uh, sorry, everyone, just one sec. Oh, you've got one? Oh, amazing, Cassie. How did I doubt you, you would have one? Okay. Okay, so Cassie's showing us something here, uh, but I would like clearly- Yeah, so, so you can that. see at the top um, there, there's a number of free that are already connected job boards. So you've got Indeed, Adzuna, Glassdoor. Um, so you basically just tick whichever ones you want your ad to push through to um, and it'll immediately um, appear on those Fantastic. Job boards. Great. Thank you, Cass. All right. So let's get back to it. Uh, the next point, um, if I may, Nicola, that I've got here. I've got inconsistency. That's number three. Inconsistencies in pre-employment checks and compliance. Um, so what we wanted to do was sort of um, refine our previous processes. And uh, as I mentioned before, there was a lot of paper involved. And so what we were looking for was more of a electronic sort of um, digital based system mm -hmm. um, where we could uh, manage everything in one spot. And so what we've used the platform to do in our pre-employment phase. So being aged care, there's a lot of compliance checks that we need to conduct on all of our new employees for mm -hmm. before they come on board. Um, and so we have set up. Can you share a couple yeah, just sure. to provide some context? Yeah, so things like police checks, work rights checks, reference checks. We do a functional assessment. Um, so all of those checks need to be done in that pre-employment phase before we can make a formal offer of employment. And how do you ensure now how did what you did with Morris Group Plus now how is it going to make it now less of a chance for the user whether it's the manager or the HR to not forget a step for example what yeah um, so we have a template set up that goes to all of our applicants that we're progressing their application for and in that uh, it's an email that's sort of been drafted. There's links in that email to each form that they're required okay. to fill out. You've, you've opted to put uh, multiple forms in one email as opposed to one at a time, which is that's right. Makes sense. So multiple forms in the one email, and then there's you know you can attach like a information guide sheet that they can refer to, um, and then basically any adjustments that need to be made can be made. So if, for example, it's someone that needs a particular um, registration, say it's a physiotherapist and we need them to upload their mm. registration, we can mm. put in a note about that as well. Okay. So you can tweak that email. Mm. Um, in terms of customising the email for the candidate, it's all um, set up in the system. So mm. when you're, it's, it's linked to the applicant, mm. um, so it will auto-populate their name. So mm. the email will yep. address, be addressed yep. to them. Yep. Um, and as, yeah, so as soon as you've finished tweaking anything you want to tweak, it goes through to the um, candidate and then they fill everything out yeah. through the platform. Just for, yeah, oh, thank you. That's the point I was going to make sure you provide clarity on. Those links, your furnitures or forms, they're not like downloaded PDF or anything. They're live e-forms. Yes. Yeah. Um, so our police check is a little bit def different because that's a, a complicated one, but they would still... Um, download that, fill it out, and they basically sure. upload it through that email. Sure. Um, so there's no printing or anything required. Okay. Okay. And then the e-form, so for example, um, they fill out a work rights consent form. Got that's it. an e-form that's being generated through My Recruitment Plus that they fill out um, and 
it comes back to us and all of this is linked to their profile record so record their system. record is updated That's through right. those e-forms done it yeah so there's like an e-forms tab right. for that person you open it up and all their forms that have been completed are there or it might say that it's been sent but not submitted yet so we're we're still awaiting the got return it. of that form got it yep makes perfect sense I, anything else on the pre-employment checks or can i move to the fifth point uh, happy yeah happy to, to move through sure the fifth point i've got literally just onboarding here uh didn't write anything else that's fine. Um, so this was a big um, win for us uh, in in the on, so the onboarding module within My Recruitment Plus. So it saved a lot of time for us in in terms of for the HR, HR team, the payroll team, and our hiring managers. So it was a win for everyone. Um, and the way we have that set up, and this might be a good one for Cassie to show us if you've got one. Thank you. Awesome. So in these um, in the onboarding pack. Uh, we include things like contract, um, so you can see it here. Um, contract, we've got a video that is a welcome video, um, code of conduct, so a few HR policies that we require our new employees to complete, and then our payroll documents, so superannuation, tax file number declaration, and I think there's a lot of those. By the way, powerful. this is not your real... No, yeah. Because, for, like, promise, <laughs> but, but no, for, for For promise it's reasons, we just uh, uh, we used one of our sample packs and we put your uh logo on top fine. of it That's just so good. you know so you're welcome to explain your own items in the yeah. package um and i guess additional, additionally to this we also include things like our salary packaging information we want our new employees to be aware of what benefits we offer um, from the get-go so it's it's a good place to include things like that um and what what happens with this is the only thing that needs to be um, edited before it can be released is the contract. So there might be things that need fields that need to be populated when um, generating a contract. Mm. Let me go backwards. Sorry. Yep. We have about 20 different contracts. So one's under our help at home brand, one one's under our main company, and then um, one's under our Marubra campuses mm -hmm. branding. Mm -hmm. um, and within those areas, then there's a number of different, um, you know, capacities that someone could be employed sure. so full-time part-time sure. sure you know a lot of variations, term, yeah. whatever it may be so we've set up packs for each of those different ways that someone can be employed so if we're bringing on a casual for one of our care units at Ramwick we'll click on the casual Montefiore pack that will bring this up we edit whatever needs to be edited in the contract so at the moment it's things like uh, maybe the manager's name if you need to include that yep. um, it might be that um, something hasn't come through, like I'm trying to think of what I, oh, so clauses. So some the, roles. The, ma the manager's name, that could be potentially. Title. Manager's title. A title. Okay. That potentially, um, I'm doing a criticism now. I'm okay. going to I'm gonna Go get in it. trouble. Um, <laughs> that could have been something you capture at the requisition form. The manager themselves can maybe enter that information and that comes through straight so you don't have to enter it in so the, the contract. So the bottom could... of the contract, it does come through, but in our, um, in our contracts, in the first sort of paragraph of our contract, we say something like, uh, in this position, you'll be reporting to. Yeah. And the field that I'm filling in is whatever's going in that part. Yeah, that could have been automated to come through. But from... we like to um, t we like to be able to type it in in case sure. for whatever reason sure. they're reporting to a different title sure. or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it might be. it's editable, but it's, it can yeah. flow through. It's, yeah, yeah, sure. It can it can be adjusted, but cool. that's sort of how and when we've got you, it set up at the moment. When you say editing, uh, just for clarity, are you really editing in an, in a word document where it's a zoo and you could be making an error, delete some by accident? Or no, it's it's just what's kind of editing. It's basically on one side of the screen is where your fields are and you might just have a skim over them and make sure you're happy with it all. The other side is what the contract's going to look like. So as you change things, you just click refresh and your contract. So you're only working with drop downs and text fields and stuff. Yeah, you're, you're not, not actually gouging. In, yeah, no, got it. So no. there's so much less risk of getting yeah. things right. Yep. And so um, we have set up a few clauses which can change depending on um, the position that we're issuing okay. a contract for. So some of our positions require a uniform, some of them don't, some of them require a laundry allowance, some of them don't. Mm. So we, we need to be able to edit that depending yep. on what um, the role is. Yep. So that's something that we do at this point. So there's maybe three or four that we would usually um, adjust or, or select. Yep for a better word. Yep. Um, and then you basically click approve and sign. So we choose to get our hiring managers to sign the contract before it goes Internal. to the okay. candidate. 
Um, so once I select who the manager is, which would be recognized because because all of our managers are set up in the system, yep. um, the contract is sent to them and they sign digitally uh -huh. um, and it, an email notification comes back to the HR team to let us know uh -huh. the manager signed and we can release the pack to the candidate. Fantastic. When we release that pack, we can set an expiry date. So say, for example, we know the employee is starting in five days. We need to ensure that we have all their documents back by then. We can let we can set that expiry date to in four days. Um, what does that mean when you set expiry date? What does uh, that mean? So there's an option to set uh, however many days. Sure. What, what's the complete... So documents. from the candidate point of view, what's the effect of that? What does that mean? It means they get prompted? They yeah, yeah, they will be told that they have this many days and then when they get to, I mean, you'll have to help me out with this, but when they get to however many days, um, they'll get a reminder via email. Yep. And then um, the day before, they'll get another reminder. I think yep. But it means they get cut off like after the yes, year. Yes, then they won't be able to access or it. they won't be able to edit. Yeah, the, yeah. Um, the so they can't, for example, further. sign the contract after that. That's right. So there's a real uh, reason or an incentive for them clearly why they want to hurry up and get it done. That's right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. very good. Excellent. Um, um, yep. And then just on that, we've also set up in that onboarding phase a few automations that are important for us. So when someone is sent an onboarding pack, a notification, an email notification is gone to a, goes to our IT team to set them up with an email address and access to whatever systems are required. Okay. So the IT team will receive all the information they need, so where the person will be working, their full name, mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. Um, and then three days after IT get that email, there's another automation for our learning and development team to mm -hmm. receive notification mm -hmm. to uh, set them up in our learning management system. So okay. we use Bridge, um, Altura, and yeah, so our learning and de development um, administrator can set them up in the learning management system for their management okay. training, which is required to be completed by the new starter sort of yep. in their first few days of employment. We, we've we begun to do integrations with learning management systems as well. So oh, potentially great. we can talk to you in the future, see if we can help you with that yeah, to sure. make it also automated, the provisioning of the candidate in the learning management system, as well as triggering to them automatically the right content. Mm -hmm. uh, we already have a partnership with Go One. Okay. Um, that does all that. And so we should maybe put us in touch with uh, mm -hmm. um, your friends at uh, what's Altura. Oh, right. Altura. Yeah. Cool. So maybe we can help you to even automate this further. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, and then, yeah. So I guess last sort of um, part is the uh, getting the data across to our payroll system. Okay. Um, so integration between my recruitment plus and yeah that's the last one i've got here yeah so that was a manual data entry to remind us a little bit how yeah. it was to enter so that's the new hire once they've completed all the onboarding pack literally you know signed the contract now everything they are a new employee now they need to be entered into the payroll system mm -hmm. and that was off the paper or off some emails and stuff entered manually yes and what happens now um, so instead, our HR team uh, basically press a button that says transfer through uh, to payroll system. Yep. Um, and then a, a form will come up uh, with all the fields that we've we've customized. So uh, I spent some time with our payroll team and with Pav from um, the My Recruitment Plus team. Mm -hmm. um, to... Hold on, I helped as well. You did. Nicola, come on, you did, but give I me have some to, credit. I have to give kudos to Pav because he's my partner in crime. Okay, um, love it. And he, uh, so what we did was we worked on exactly what we wanted to be able to push through. Um, so there were some fields that could have been pushed through um, in, in the integration, but our payroll, payroll team decided that at this stage, they would still do some fields manually. So there's a, a whole list of fields that um, have been set up. Uh, we review those fields to make sure that everything looks okay. Um, and then we push it through and yep. it's basically put into a holding folder that, that that's then um, retrieved by Chris21. The schedules throughout the day that pick up those files Got it. and input them into Chris21. Got, Got it. Roughly, would you be able to, if you're comfortable to share, what would you say to enter one of those records in Chris21? 20, 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour? Now? The Before. manual, yeah. I think, and I could be underselling it, but I'm sure it's at least a couple of hours for a new starter to enter all that information into by hand and, and now and pretty now, much like 
five minutes. Okay. If there's any data that needs to be slightly manipulated, if. Otherwise, pretty much seconds yeah. or something. Cool. Yeah. Automatically, really. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Well, it looks like we've had a very good run, which is good because I really want to open the floor and make it interactive. I don't want this to be a presentation. We've done very well, thanks to our champion here, Nicola. She summarized it really, really nice. She's covered so many areas. She's covered the career site, um, the posting. Uh, we didn't cover anything to do with the requisition from me knowing what parts of the platform, what, what are the modules in the platform, but that, that's perfectly fine the ad posting and the ability to know which uh, job board i guess is good for what type of role so you can invest your advertising dollars more wisely we talked about inconsistencies and and the compliance uh, aspect of the pre-employment checks and all that we talked about pre-employment checks and we talked about onboarding and in the onboarding, we talked about the automations to the stakeholders, the mm -hmm. various stakeholders in the business to know a new person is starting and what they need to do, yep. provisioning, et cetera. And we talked about, the, finally, the uh, automating the uh, data entry into Chris21, the payroll system that you use. So that covers so many areas. So I'm, I'm over the moon that you covered all that. Thank you very much. Uh, unless there's anything you want to say, I would love to open the floor. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to questions. get too technical and I may have exactly. gone a little bit too deep there on some of the parts and I don't want to confuse people. So I'm happy to, um, yeah. if anyone has any questions, Let's do it. we can be, get more specific yeah. if needed. Do we have Cassie still here? Yeah. Oh, hello, Cassie hello. and Lucy over there. Guys, that's the marketing team who's been working hello. very hard to make this possible. So thank you, guys. Really appreciate you. Um, so we're good to do the Q and A now, Cass. All good, fantastic. So, guys, do I need to do anything new to whatever? We're good. All that is going well. Yeah, why don't you guys mute yourselves? Mm -hmm. And then that way, this one will be. Yeah, yeah. done. Fantastic. And then we've got Eddie on standby, who's going to let us know fantastic. if there's any audio problems. Okay, so guys, hit us with any questions, right, Cass? Yeah, anything you yeah. like. Uh, I'll, I'll, please, I'm an important person here. Try to ask me some questions. I know she's going to steal the show, Nicola. I'm warning you, I'm going to be very upset if you don't ask me at least one question, but go crazy. Mm. We actually had one um, before, okay. and it was from Jennifer. It was when we were discussing onboarding packs um, and contracts, and she asked if it merged into HRM. I think you briefly talked about it with payroll but i don't know if you wanted to talk about integrations sure. potentially a little and, and bit. Uh, now that cassie framed it like that if you feel you would try to rephrase the question yeah. more specifically but i tend to agree with cassie mm. i think that's our understanding of it well, yeah. i think we started talking about it just after she asked yeah oh, like, okay i thought okay. so as well but okay. just didn't want her to think we weren't answering it jennifer don't sure. worry i got your back so from the yeah so from just one tiny clarification maybe you know, from the integration framework that we have, it really doesn't care what kind of system it is. Anything in the ecosystem, the HR ecosystem or technology ecosystem, really we can set up integrations, whether it's a learning management system or HR system or payroll or anything else, really, we, to be honest, we don't care. We primarily feel as if it's going to be naturally the payroll system, but really doesn't matter. So, mm. cool. Okay. Next question, guys. By the way, can I just say if somebody is more comfortable to talk, use the raise your hand feature. We're more than happy to let you talk if you're not comfortable to type. Um, so whatever you're comfortable with, uh, to either myself or to Nicola, uh, go for it. I have a question for you, Nicola, actually. Okay. Since no one else has taken the floor. Go for sure. it. I'd like to know, if you have any advice for anyone on this webinar today that it may be going through some recruitment and onboarding challenges or are thinking of adopting some sort of digital software, if there's anything from your experience that you can give them for them to learn from you? Sure. Through maybe the search? Yeah, or... the search potentially or your requirements or... I think that the thing that comes to my mind is I think we were really um, lucky and we did, we did it right in... Uh, over estimating how long the, the process would take for us because what um, what we did was for that three month period that I was seconded, it meant that I was completely free from my regular role. Okay. I was focusing just on this. Right. And while the system itself could have been implemented in less time, 
I was able to refine lots of other mm. things in my mm. time there. So mm. I was able to use uh, what the platform could improve in terms of our mm. functionality yep. to then complement, you know, other areas that were sort of sitting outside of the platform. Yep. Um, so having that three months to dedicate to rolling out the platform and getting involvement from our leadership. So mm. I would go to like our workforce steering committees and present to them and um, get their feedback on how, you know, the decisions that were being made yep. um, by me and the sort of more local HR mm. team. Um, to get input from them and work out if there was anything else that I yeah. wanted to look at. Mm. And I think that really allowed us to customise the, si the system and the platform, sorry, as much as we possibly could before, yeah. you know, going live yeah. and using it. Yeah. Uh, so I, mean, I think that was invaluable. I, I have to comment from what I know myself. I mean, the way you guys went about this, I mean, it was really methodic, was so thorough. I mean, you guys had, must have had about seven meetings prior during the sales process. I remember I was dragged into a couple of those meetings because Janine or Pav or would say to me, oh, CEO is going to be on this meeting. I need you to come in. And go, whoa, very rarely that we go into a sales meeting with the CEO is there. So it, it, at some stage there was one meeting, there was 15 people in that meeting from Montefiore. The entire leadership team. I mean, this is amazing. Mm. It was so it's a really pretty important project for you guys, and you wanted to get it right, and you brought everybody on that journey to the buying from them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I mean, anything around that that you felt helped you later on? Is that was good for you later on? You well, I think that yeah. what exactly what you just said. There was buying from the beginning from multiple people in the organisation. It was it was it was an important um, project that we were working on. Yeah. Um, and, and so it was really good to keep those, those people involved throughout the process and make sure that we were delivering what we, we expected to be delivering. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that was a, it was a great experience. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. What question do we have now? So um, we've got two questions. We'll start with Josh, Joshua Harris. Um, he's asked a question. It's in the chat. I don't know if you have a chance to see. It's a bit of a long one. Um, uh, what I options? Can't see it where it, it's in, oh, in the chat. Yeah. Sorry, I'm in the Q and A. So, why do they have two things? Chat and Q. Can you disable one of them or something? Potentially next time we can look into it. Okay, I can't see it. I don't know where. I got you. Is. What oh. options do you have for automated role-based account creation and device slash equipment management systems? I really need to see it. I'm yeah, so that's what I feel. I'll just click on the chat. They, they popped up now. Okay. Perfect. It's just if yeah. What options do you have for automated role-based account a creation and device equipment management systems? Uh, I guess you're talking about uh, automated, uh, you know, automation to make sure the um, the provisioning uh, accounts are being created to the right system for that person and the procurement of the right equipments for them, for example, computers or medical device or whatever. Is that, can you just confirm, Joshua, that's what you're talking about, pretty much provisioning, system provisioning and and procurement of equipment, just to make sure? Yes, he said that's correct. Okay, correct. So we uh, we have the, as Nicola, would you like Nicola to, from your perspective, I think it's better if you answer that. Okay, can you- The automation. Just... Yeah, which part, which part of the organization? Sure. So imagine, you know, with the IT, yeah. how you were able now to let the IT people that provision uh, the new email address for that person and starts to add them to different systems they need to have access mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. how the automation can help to let them know ASAP so they have enough time to provision yes. all that. Yes, okay. Uh, so it's, it's a basically a prompt, but it gives them the required information about the person. So from requisition all the way through every step in, in the platform, the information filters through. So uh, things like cost center. So when the, the role is raised, so a, a manager puts, puts through a requisition, so a, a raises a request to recruit to a position, mm -hmm. they have to select a number of fields which are customized. So if they're a particular manager, they'll have a cost center that's linked to their, you know, what their position is in the organization, mm -hmm. their department, um, what roles that that report to them, all of that will be, they won't be able to request a role that doesn't report to them, if that okay. makes sense. We've set it all okay. up in the back end. That's sure. what we did when we implemented. Sure. Um, so when you get to the point of onboarding someone and we set up an automation, so it's a basically just a, an email that gets sent to 
our IT email user group. So we send yep. it to multiple people. Yep. Um, in that email, you set up um, fields that come through from that beginning phase or maybe later in the process. So their full name, where they're going to be working, are they casual or full-timer, part-timer? Mm -hmm. Um, and then our IT team... And, and, sorry, and maybe what systems they need to have access to? So it will, the email won't tell them what systems they but need to have access to? Sorry, Nicole, that is definitely possible. As a matter of fact, the manager in the requisition could maybe indicate what systems sure. they have access to, and that can flow through into the email as well. Yep. Whether it's needed or not. Just to... For our IT team, I think, I mean, they... They sort of know. They know based on the position what um, access so, they would need. Yeah. Um, so it's not something that we've looked at sure. adding in at the moment. But I mean, we've been live with the system for six months and we've already made so many changes. So I think as you... When, when you say changes, more, improvements. Sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, so we've kind of learned new ways or new things in the system that we didn't quite yeah. realise at the time yeah. when we were going live or we weren't... Yeah. Um, ready for that yet. No, we love the continuous improvement. I'm, yes. not, I'm serious now. Yeah, yeah. It's actually a great thing. The fact that it's an agile process, you don't have to sit there trying to set it up for six, 12 months, and then you can't change it once you set it up. My goodness, that's the worst thing. Yeah, yeah. Ever. No, no, definitely able to customise and make improvements, which is yeah. great. Cool. And, and Joshua, yeah. if there was any uh, APIs that allows us to even do the provisioning directly, we, we would be delighted to then implement that. Uh, as an integration piece as part of that provisioning as well, as opposed to, as Nicola said, just letting the right people and remind them to do what they need to do uh, for either the provisioning or for the um, um, for the, the uh, procurement. So if you have a procurement system and we need to pop some stuff in it about, oh, here's the person starting, that's what they need, we'd be del delighted to also implement that part of the whole integration framework that we've been investing in to make sure any new integration that we need to bring in that adds value to the process can be done in a very cost-effective way. Uh, a lot of reuse in the framework. It's a very, very significant framework. It's got a lot of building blocks that we can reuse quickly to put together a new integration piece. Cool, next um, one. Yeah, so we've got two questions. We'll start with um, Leonard and then we'll move to Gail. So um, uh, this is from Leonard. I might be off topic, but does this recruitment software individually screen resumes for prospective employees or um, are they still done manually by HR? The uh, individual screens? Well, the, uh, Nicola, you've mentioned the screening questions, for example, so you can customise uh, for every role um, what screening questions you need to make it really uh, pretty straightforward for you to get the information you need, whether, okay, we're going to at least shortlist them and start the conversation with them. On the other hand as well, part of that screening question, you can even set what we call auto-screening. So you can say, look, if they answer this kind of uh, answer, let's say it's a drop down with yes and no, and if they say no to this, I don't know, do you have the right to work in Australia, you can flag them to be not you know, you don't want to consider them anymore. The, the whole record comes up as red. You can just ignore it, move to the next one. So we, there are tools like that as well. Um, I guess, so In terms of reviewing a, a resume, we, the H, for Montefiore, we review the resumes. But I guess further to what Anwar said, we use that, um, the screening tool to be able to screen out. So something that we use often is if we're uh, looking for a permanent full-time position, for that position, would we would put in a screening question around, um, do you have any restrictions on how many hours you can work each week? And if someone answers that they're on a student visa and we know that they're restricted to 40 hours a fortnight, they will flag. So we can still review their application. They're not just, you know, not able to apply. Um, it just flags it with us so that we know. So maybe we, you know, we could consider students for some of our ca casual positions, um, but for a permanent full-time position, we know that only the people that have answered that question um, with unrestricted um, that we would review their CV from there. So there's ways that you can make the screening process easier. Um, yeah. yeah. Also in the list that you're looking at the uh, applications uh, in the against that job, we present to you in a list more than just the name. I wish we had a screenshot to put up. Uh, we present to you a lot of information, for example, where they were working, 
uh, where they are working at the, at the moment or the last job they had, how many years of experience they have, is this um, the candidate their current job title. So, is this the candidate profile that you're talking about? Uh, that's at the top. The list of candidates in the against the job. Okay. But, but that's okay, Cass, I can explain. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, you, you know, to be honest, that gives you a lot of that knowledge to be able to know that this is, you know, I, I think it's, I, I don't need to really consider this any further. Yeah. Um, so really, it's not as, as bad as you think. However, um, we two innovations that are coming uh, on, online pretty soon. One is literally February this year, just a couple of months, where you'll be able to have the auto rating based on setting um, uh, you know, score system against the, the screening questions, not just to say, look, this is definitely a no, if they answer, say, you know, this particular answer to that question, they are not considered, but you can also end up with a scoring system and the list is actually ordered by that scoring system that will be coming online in uh, February. It's been on, it's been on the cards for about six, seven years and clients tell us about it during the sales process, but once they're online on board, they realize it's not actually that much needed and there's, therefore we would end up focusing on other parts and it's not really hard to do, but at the moment uh, it's becoming more and more that we've been hearing about it as requirements, we decided to put it on the, uh, on the uh, product roadmap for the short term. The other innovation that we have is to do the same thing to rate or score the candidates you know, and sort them based on the psychometric assessment profile so we have a product that I don't think yet uh, Montefiore adopted. Quite started that process yet. Sure. We have the video-based and AI technology-based uh, psychometric uh, talent assessment that creates a big five score. And so if you have, we can help you to, on a per role basis, to create the ideal profile for that role, whether you use your own psychologist or some of the people that we work with, and once we've identified that perfect uh, big five profile, we can then, as soon as, which is within 15 minutes, as soon as the candidate completes their video interview, the, um, the big five um, rating is available and then they get a score as we match them against the ideal profile for that role. So two innovations coming online that will help you with that kind of automatic, if you like, uh, scoring system. If, if, that, if you have some kind of high volume roles. I'll just put a screenshot up of what it looks like actually, the psychometric assessment. Yeah, that's when you're in an individual, thank you, Cass, so when you're looking at the report. So as I mentioned, once you send the invite, takes just a click or automate it, automate it even from a certain stage, they get the invite to record their video interview. Once they've finished, I'm just trying, I've got so many screens and a small laptop, sorry, I was trying to sort that through them. Once they've recorded their video interview, uh, within 15 minutes, the uh, psychometric talent assessment report is created. So you'll be able to go into the tab under the candidate record and see the report as Cassie is showing us on the screen, as well as being able to at the same time, uh, see what the question was for every questions they had to answer and play the actual video cast. Oh, that's a screenshot. No, yes. I was going to ask you to click on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> so tempting when you see something like that. Don't know if everyone wants to hear me. <laughs> So basically that's Cassie did this for you guys clearly for privacy. We're not going to use any real candidate data. So you would click on the, um, on the play button to even watch how Cassie answered that question because a big part of uh, soft skills assessment, including psychometric assessments is what the candidate says and how. So you're able to see that plus see what the report that was generated by our, team, by our um, AI technology that's based on the five framework is actually telling you. So you can see the two side by side. Um, so that is uh, already available, but what's coming on board is to be able to create an automatic matching uh, against the role, against the ideal big five profile for that role. And so Cassie, not just you'll be able to see what you're looking at, but also Cassie now is gonna get an overall score compared to the other applicants, whether that's 80 out of 100 to me, I would give her 20%, but <laughs> I think she's doing an awesome job today. Plus I, have to say. I can't upset her today. She's, she's doing in an control awesome of job. everything right now. <laughs> <laughs> the right timing. Okay, fair enough. I'll take it back. <laughs> Apologies. All right, so next question. Yeah, um, this one's from Gail. So she said, Where is the best place to start if you wish to review the system? 
uh, to review the system. Oh, you can uh, create um, a free plan and have a play. Yeah. And we actually support the free plan account. You all come to call us and we'll give you a hand to customize it if you're not sure how to do it on your own and have a play. I mean, it's indefinitely you can have a play. It's really a proper free tier where all the functions, uh, put it this way, 90% maybe of the functions are available for you to test, but we limit you with the volume. So you can only have one job open at any one time. So for testing purposes, it's absolutely perfect. Um, and uh, otherwise, just get in touch uh, with Cass after this, or yeah. let us know now whenever you're, you're ready. We can put you in touch with a sales team that can do, give you a demo, as well as help you to set up the account. So either way, hope that makes sense. Next one. Um, don't have any more at the moment. Okay, I'm sure Cassie or Lucy, you've got some questions for Nicola. Oh, don't put us on the spot like what that. Come on, come on. <laughs> Lucy, one Nicola, question. You've been killing it. How about something that you're still learning because you're new I'm to the team? I'm still new, okay. So something you're on your mind about a feature Nicola, maybe that Nicola can, can answer. What is your favourite feature and why? Okay. Awesome, love yeah. it. I love. <laughs> My favourite feature selfishly because i am responsible for this part of the, of the system yeah um is the contract generating so in that onboarding phase yeah and how everything's done for us we kind of just select based on the options that are set up you don't have to like you can have templates outside of a system set up for contracts mm. and you can use those and yes they make your life easier but this is different yeah. this is like yeah. you just have to select the options you don't even you have to really out. type anything mm. Um, and being able to send that through to the manager to then sign it within like a few seconds. Like if they're at their computer, I mean, they sign it straight away. They can even do it on their phone. Mm. Um, so it's the turnaround times for getting that sort of stuff out is amazing. So yeah. that I think is my favorite part of the platform. Yeah. Awesome. I have a question for you. I'm sure you do, Cass. I have plenty. I'm going to be here all night. <laughs> um, have you, like, since implementing this new process and obviously refreshing your recruitment and onboarding functions, have you had any feedback from maybe candidates or any um, other users, team, like mm. leadership team? Exactly. If you just let me finish, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm so sorry. My sister, apologies. Uh, I forgive. Yeah. Um, so from our managers, I mean, they are all... Um, sort of still learning the system, the ones that have been able to use it, because some of our managers don't recruit all the time, so may not need to use the system. But the good thing about this is I think you don't have to be a, a sort of system guru to get how it works. You're kind of prompted how to do your parts as a hiring manager. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a very seamless process and we've got feedback around that from, from those managers. When we first went live, one of our first um, employees that we onboarded through the platform was one of our senior managers like it was a senior manager position and so I remember I had you know been responsible for the project and then to have this senior manager go through the process for the like being the first person that goes through the new system I was really nervous I was like oh gosh like of course it has to be this way um, and he unprompted sent through uh, feedback about how welcome he felt all the communication that he received throughout the process of him, yep. um, you know, moving his way through the different yep. stages of interviews and pre-employment checks and onboarding. Mm -hmm. um, so he was really complimentary and that was yep. a really great start to going live with the system because it was like an, ex an extra boost of confidence, yep. I guess. Yeah, I, I know I, uh, I could be, you know, I've got a conflict of interest, it's on the CEO of the platform, but I visited Almost every single time, 90% of the time when I visit clients, that's the biggest thing that I get. I was um, at a mining company out of Queensland and the, the HR manager and the head of talent acquisition uh, talking to me about the platform, they gave me some feedback, some of it was, you know, things they would like to see improved, clearly negative in a sense, and there was the positive. And in terms of the positive, the number one for them was when we see people post recruitment, so we're on into the medication or whatever, um, the biggest feedback when they reflect on the process when we were talking to them through the recruitment onboarding is how amazing the onboarding technology was, how easy to work with and they felt uh, important, they felt that they were joining the right company. 
something like, we knew you were a good company, clearly we wanted to work for you, but that onboarding pack really elevated our perception of your organization. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, it, yeah it's it's got a huge impact and I, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't fault it. It's it's, it's amazing. It thank is, you, it's an honor. Thank you very much. Like, yeah. The contracts, they really get me. Really <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's Lucy's turn. Oh, one more. <laughs> well, we've got a virtual crowd, except the crowd oh. is here. We call it virtual crowd, but He's I don't know. He's putting us on the spot. Okay. It's, come on, you're doing well so far. Keep um, trying. So we talked about favourite feature. Yeah. That was the first question. Have we talked about police checks? Do you use our new police check integration? Wrong question, Kathy. No, 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 it's okay. You don't use it at the moment yet, so it's perfectly fine. Go for it. So you're not using it at the moment. No, so we um, do our police tre checks direct through ASIC. Mm -hmm. yep. um, yeah. So you collect for clarity. I'm perfectly fine with that, Nicola. For clarity, you part of the pre-employment checks, you collect the required information. Yeah, so we still candidate. use the platform yep. to um, yep. issue the form and yep. they return it through the platform. Sure. Um, and then we log on to the portal yeah, with ASIC. Of yeah, outside of the platform. You put all oh, the information okay. in, mm -hmm. and what within a day, two, three, you'll get a report back. Sometimes on. straight away. Um, if they and have. Does provide that integration with the police and all that? I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. A, mm -hmm. the government thing, yeah? yeah? Something like that. Yeah. A government organization. Yes. Yeah. So you enter the details of the candidate, you know, name, surname, date of birth, yeah, all ID, addresses, etc. all the information you need yeah. for any regular police check. Yeah. Um, and. Yeah, it comes back either yep. straight away or if they've got like a common yep. name, maybe it'll take a couple sure. of days to process. Sure. Um, and then, yeah, that's the police check done. No worries. Yeah. So just for clarity, which is I'm perfectly okay with that, and thank you for being kind about it, but the reason uh, Nicola said the um, it's the wrong question, I'm more than happy to be 100% transparent about that. Um, at the moment, our friends at Montefiore feel they're paying less when they do it directly, but it makes perfect sense. I guess we a charging premium to make profit, we use the same, eventually we're talking to the same people at the police, our friends at the federal police, really. Yeah, but it means you don't have to go outside. Exactly, to exactly. So we do, we do the way we do it is we add a margin for us to make profit from it, but we create that convenience yeah. where it's done within a couple of clicks. And so there's more accuracy, quick, for sure. and, and then everything in one place. When that report comes back, you don't have to attach it to the candidate record either. Mm -hmm. You're prompted the there's automatic prompts to both the candidates and and uh, and and the users when the report comes in. I guess we charge for that convenience and, and automation. Perfectly fine. It's your choice how you want to do it. It's mm -hmm. perfectly cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Next question. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, is there one? Sorry, what happened? There's another one. Oh, yeah. there's one? Okay. Do, do you want to read? Oh, do you want me to read it? Which one? I'm, I'm um, just, what measurable improvements could be seen when adapting this system and the streamlined onboarding process? Was there a reduction in candidate drop-off rates? It's still early days. I don't actually have an answer for that. Um, very good question. Um, I think measurably, like from what we could measure to date, just getting the documents back in a timely, like a, in, in that required time frame is what has been the most noticeable difference. And especially for our payroll team, they were having to chase people, um, which they just didn't have, don't have capacity to do. Um, so when there was a form missing, they would have to follow that up. That can't happen now. We can't sure. release the documents until they've completed everything in that sure. pack. Sure. So, from what I've been able to measure in the time we've had the platform, that would be something that I could definitely comment on. In terms of candidate uh, drop-off... I can maybe help yeah. you just to present different areas and see if you can provide a gut feel on that, if, if at all possible. Otherwise, say I can't say. We can maybe break it up into, say, four or five pieces. Say the requisition process, you know, maybe it was a PDF form that you have to print and fill out and now it's all automated. So that maybe shortens the recruitment process a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Saves managers time. Yeah. If you're doing, I don't know, without giving away anything about your turnover or anything, anything from 250 year olds to 750 year olds, you can imagine if there's half an hour in there, that's a bit of an indication. Is that fair? Yeah. Then the posting that you talked of and the the support that you don't have to now allow for the candidates, you're yep. not supporting them with username, password, all yep. that drama, the copy and paste and posting of the ads, 
there's tons of time and money, I guess, there. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, in terms of time in the process, um, efficiencies. Say, yeah, efficiencies. Yeah, sa yeah, saving. Um, but I'm just, because I think Mark was sort of asking in terms of the onboarding process, what have we been able oh. to measure? Um, yep. And in terms of drop off, I'm trying to think of how many candidates have been sent a pack but never completed it. That's what I'm mm. trying to think because that would be a mm. measure. And I don't think, I mean, maybe there's been, I could probably count yep. them on one hand in six yep. months. Yep. Um, so I, I would say that that's pretty low. Mm. 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 No, no question about it. I uh, have similar experience myself. I've done something really naughty, but I can, you know, to be honest, maybe people can forgive me for it. When I was in my 20s, I was in the IT industry and I had this agency that, you know, was trying to headhunt me for my next contract. And the the process was really clunky. I mean, they came in, it was on the phone and I had to go to their office and whatever else. And when it came to onboarding, they said, oh, we're sending an LD contract. I mean, I, I haven't I hadn't seen the contract for a, five days and I hadn't seen the contract. In the meantime, someone really, really smooth, another recruiter came and met me in the cafe where I was working next door. And they told me about the role in an amazing way. They brought the manager on a phone call almost the next day and they took me to the company, met with the managers and everybody else. And I haven't even yet got the contract from the other company. You know, I ended up actually switching and signing the contract before the other contract came to me. Mm. So I sent an email, apologize, I'm not gonna take your role. And then I see the contract and the pack arriving two days later. I mean, I don't know if that if something he tells a story to mm -hmm. learn from, but you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's really important that you keep your applicants, you know, aware of what's happening and where things are at because mm -hmm. you've got to keep them motivated and interested. Um, there's lots of competition out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you're talking to the candidate and you you um, negotiating, I don't know, start date and final salary and bonus and whatever else. And you go, cool, um, let me just get this approved. Mm -hmm. And you go into the approval thing and within minutes, if you're the manager, you can probably approve it as long as within budget straight away on the spot, you can give them that verbal agreement. Yeah. And then within literally seconds, while you're on the phone, probably you can say, can you check your email, the onboarding package right there? Yeah. Just you've got a few days. Can you please get that signed within a few days? I mean, mm. compared to my experience, that's where yeah. I ended up dropping out. So anyway, um, my partner's just gone through the exact same experience as well. Um, yeah, but we'll move on because we've got a couple of questions. If okay. that's okay, it's a, for another uh, another webinar. another webinar. Okay. A webinar totally sure. dedicated to onboarding. It's totally dedicated to partners. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've got um, one here in the chat, and it's other than police checks, what are the other pre-employment checks, and how does the system support? Okay, let's reference check for example. Mm -hmm. At the moment, you use an XREF. Yeah, we use XREF. Yeah. Shout out to XREF. Yeah, and a great, fantastic company. Um, and we've done full integration with them, but as I understand, you haven't connected to systems yet. Not yet. Yeah. Um, but my understanding is it's very simple, easy. Literally, process, yeah. if we start now, in the next 30 seconds, you could be integrated. Yeah. It's an OAuth, just like when Google says, um, give, can you give that system a permission? Just the fact that you're logged on, it will um, recognize that, and then you just need to click yes, I give permission, and boom, yeah. they're connected. Um, so we use, yeah, so reference checks. Um, I think I mentioned we do work rights checks. I mean, we get a, our consent form through the platform, but all work rights checks have to be done through um, yeah. the Department of Immigration. Um, checks we do, we have a stat deck form that we also send through the system. Do you do children? No, we don't need to do those ones. But yeah, I mean, similar situation, mm. you could mm. definitely. For, for clarity, from a platform point of view, as opposed to just your own experience. Um, we, as a, a reference check, we did this at high level, two options, I guess. Um, you can use our own standard automated reference check, or you can work with any of the partners that we have. Right now, we've completed the integration with XREF and we're delighted to work with them, uh, but also there will be a, a referral that's coming online yeah. by the end of March, hopefully. So you'll be able to use either of those two and hopefully future more, as well as ours is always available as well. Yeah. So you can pick and choose which one you want to use mm -hmm. um, from the capability of the platform and it's 100% automated and 
would definitely get you integrated with the extra thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, other 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 uh, uh, pre-employment checks. Pre checks mm -hmm. That's a good point. What what else? The psychometrics uh, the psychometrics is a do you guys have any requirements for uh, we, for some roles for we haven't typically used psychometrics um which is why we haven't um delved into sure. that part of the platform sure um but i mean i'm sure it's something that down the track we would gail do you have something. anything in particular maybe you want to know about and we'll because we just someone else that asked that question. oh okay <laughs> the, so just in terms of the pre-employment checks if you have anything in particular in mind we might have just forgotten to which ones mm -hmm. we have or not have, we're happy to then zoom on on those in particular. But in the meantime, what's the other question? Case? Yeah, from Gail, what information do you believe is necessary for reporting requirements? For example, where applications are coming from, the number of applications, etc. Do you use those reports that we have in the platform about the return on investment uh, from the advertising? Access the reporting. Um, of the system as yet yeah. i think alex was looking at the report sure. Sure. um but i mean feel free to jump in i'm off no definitely are available i guess they wanted to know from your perspective uh from reporting from you you haven't sort of focused on that area yet what your priorities would be but from the capabilities uh i, I mean from what i said before and where the applications are coming from is key for us yeah. because we like to know where yeah. in advertising future yeah. um, and with that number of applications of course if you're getting more applications from a certain job board that's a good sign for future advertising yeah um i'm just trying to think of what other reports there are can you remind me oh my gosh there's so many for example you know the time to fill time okay. to you know how long it took you how many days from yeah. the time for example the requisition was created or from the time the requisition was approved or yeah. from the time the ads are posted you know, there's multiple time to hire sort of metrics. Yeah. Um, there's what we call the progress report where you can see for every role, um, where are the candidates, you know, those, the, the short list is sitting in which stages okay. and how long it took to get them into those stages mm -hmm. and um, see information about them. So for example, whether they've submitted now uh, those kind of pre-employment checks, are they sitting in the medical, are they sitting in the police check, right. are they sitting where, right. and have sort of overview um and you've got what we call stats report give you a big overview about okay in this time period last three months last 12 months uh, uh, three years etc how many ads in total are posted how many applications in total mm -hmm. what's the average time to hire what's the uh, uh, a breakdown of the uh, for example for the based on agenda for women how many applications were rejected right straight away without even progress right Okay. You know, uh, in terms of bias or understanding how you're progressing on gender kind of equality mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. There's tons of reporting and it's an area we're improving on all the time. Uh, you know, we we hear requirements all the time and we go, hmm, that's interesting. And we, we, we implement it for everybody in a sense. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll need to I'll need to delve into the reporting functions sure. to work out. Um, yeah. where we can get I'm not going to help you with it because you think you have your mate Pav yeah. is your favourite <laughs> so you can call Pav then. I've got him on call, it's all good. <laughs> um, maybe I haven't looked at the reporting function because our team is just so efficient that uh, there's no question about how long things <laughs> yeah. take, up, take yeah. us. To there's, there's no rules about uh, every company's what their priorities are and when. Um, I think Alex has definitely had a look at the reporting yeah. but I just I think I was um, involved in something else at the time so yeah. i haven't actually got to that but and, and to be honest people resort to reporting when they know there's something broken they want to know where the problem is so i guess because everything's flowing so nicely yeah probably we don't need to prove anything yeah <laughs> <laughs> i remember one of the uh, i mean you know none of us come from the hr background we're technologists with passion for products and customer service and whatever and one of the things that we really learned about you know seven eight years ago our clients used to tell us this report that we have on we need, we call it the uh, blame and shame or name and shame or something. Oh, excuse me, name and shame, all right? Can you explain? She goes, okay, so when we're sitting in a meeting with the CEO, um, we have always this kind of, let's call it disagreements between HR and the managers. Uh, HR says, the managers say, well, that's the reason I've got 50 people, empty seats in, the, in, my, in my department. 
and because I'm not getting, you know, quality candidates or HR aren't doing their job. And HR goes, excuse me, I've got 20 people shortlisted waiting for your feedback for every one of those roles. But yet we want something to prove that quickly. I can print it, take it into those meetings, show them. So that's, yeah. I guess, when things aren't going right, you want reports, you know? Mm. Yeah, so that's definitely a I guess it's better to have the option so that you, I mean, it's good to get in the habit of reporting on on these types of things to work out how maybe there's, you know, lags in certain areas and you can improve um, in how you're using the system. Sure, and, sure. Um, engaging with people at certain phases yeah. in the life cycle. Yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, what else? Whose turn now? The uh, hired crowd, uh, Lucy and Kaz from marketing, maybe they can ask a question until someone else has. How long have we been going for? We've five been going minutes. For an hour and for five an hour and five minutes. minutes. We've done a fantastic job. Wow. You've been an amazing uh, co-host, um, Nicola. You've done a fantastic yeah. job. And, and you guys, clearly, we wouldn't be even talking and here without you. Yeah, we thanks for have... all the questions. Exactly. We really appreciate it. We appreciate being there because that clearly gave us the motivation for this. We wouldn't have done it without you. So um, uh, we're happy to stay on if you have any more questions. Otherwise, maybe we'll wrap it up over the next five minutes. Yeah. yeah. So just sort of last shout, last shout warning in a sense. Maybe. Um, what about talent pools? Do you use them oh, yeah, or okay. are you okay. thinking of okay. using them? We do use the talent pools. Um, in particular, so we have a dedicated talent acquisition advisor in our team. So she does the majority of the recruitment and then I help out um, as well. Um, and I think she particularly uses them in situations, and I think this is when they're best used, is um, if, for example, we're advertising for a role, there's one position, but you've got three great candidates, but you can only obviously fill, uh, offer the role to one of them. Um, and so uh, having a conversation with those two other candidates about, you know, future opportunities and um, using the talent pool function to keep mm. the, their applications um, on file. and. We've got talent pools set up for different positions. So yeah. we've got a talent pool for, you know, our leisure and lifestyle team, for example, the roles in that department or um, physiotherapists, for example. So um, it's good to have the option to be able to um, look back on candidates that you've already met with and spent the time um, going through mm -hmm. an interview with um, and, and giving them the opportunity to come on board down the track if they're still looking for work. And you customize the talent pool name and stuff so you know how to filter them and search through. Yeah? Yes, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, got one more question for you, and then I think maybe we'll wrap it up. Um, your career site, which obviously um, we do, the home care one, I think it is. Correct me. Your career site, your job board. Yeah. Yeah. How do you find that in terms of functionality? Do you find that you have a lot of candidates coming through there? Um, or do you find like seek or indeed? No, work? we do get we do get candidates, and it's it's good that I looked at this yesterday. I was looking at a, this particular role. I was looking at for a registered nurse, um, and I wanted to know where all the applications were coming from. Mm. And I think I mentioned before there was about sixty percent that came through one particular job board. Mm. Um, but there were, I think, out of seventy applications, ten that came through our website wow. um, so our careers page mm -hmm. um, which is great um, which is really good you know for for that's something passive cassie is very passionate about <laughs> she's written blogs about and she's trying to promote through the marketing um uh, you know uh, channels that we have is this concept of like i'll let you explain it cassie in mm -hmm. two seconds this concept of um your candidate is your customer and your tomorrow and vice versa, your customer tomorrow is your candidate and that sort of nice vicious cycle in a sense. It, it couldn't be more true for an aged care company. It's definitely a consumer product, you know, mm -hmm. it's not a company company business. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with three people, the daughter and the granddaughter and the grand granddaughter of that client of yours are involved in the process to bring that, uh, you know, older person into your homes and they are a consumer of your brand but they're clearly alerted that the granddad is there. And if I'm a registered nurse and I hear great news, how they are treated them, and when I go and visit my granddad, I feel this is an amazing place. Of course, I want to work for you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go to seek to find you out. I'm going to go to your website. And if you have a beautiful career site, I'm going to apply for it. Yeah. And here you go. You've just saved yourself uh, ads and investment on seek. Mm -hmm. Cass, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, no, I think you covered it completely. 
I mean, when you go into your career site, you've got your values listed. Do you um, show them more than just your name? You tell them the experience, who you are, what it would be like to work for you. You really leave a lasting impression, mm -hmm. which is exactly what Unless covered. It's mm -hmm. not just about um, trying to get candidates. It's also about um, your impression as a, as a business and uh, elevating your employer branding. Mm -hmm. So 100% what Anu's mentioned, I think you covered it really well. No Thank wonder you, you're in marketing. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> I'm trying. Cool. Yeah. So um, it's been fantastic. We still have 25 people on the call. Um, guys, we're probably going to wrap it up if you don't have any more questions because uh, Nicola has been amazingly generous with her time. You guys have no idea how much we really are grateful. Uh, she's coming in for a practice run to make sure we're all going to be on the same page with the tech and everything else. And she helped us on Monday with a, a quick um, trailer mm. to send to the people that bought tickets to give them an idea of what it's going to look like. So she's been extremely generous with her time. We're not going to keep her for, on for any minute that we don't need to. If mm. you feel that you're happy with the, with the webinar, you've learned what you want to know about, we're just going to wrap it up. I'll give you five seconds. I'm going to do a countdown now. Five, four, three, two, one, and... I guess. See you, everybody. Thank you Thanks very you much, everyone. everyone. We really appreciate you. And thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Marketing. Thank You're you, amazing, guys. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Bye. Bye, everyone. See you.